All right, we've got the old LS3 Miata back in the shop. Today, not as much for the fun stuff. We got fun stuff to do, but we've got a major issue. Basically, our clutch keeps grabbing higher and higher and higher, and it's getting to the point where it's grabbing at the very top. It did this before and found out that the slave sonar throwout bearing right here was too big, all the way compressed. It was too thick, and it was basically like as if you had your foot on the clutch you know, partially pushing on the clutch the whole time, the clutch started slipping. So I got an adjustable one, set it to the correct measurement, put it in, put it all back together, everything was fine. Set the pedal to where it's grabbing about in the middle. We were good, we had plenty of adjustment either way, and went to the clutch kickers event, drove the car, and as the day went on, as I drove more and more, it started grabbing higher and higher and higher. I was adjusting the pedal in further and further until I ran out of adjustment, still grabbing at the top. One thing I understand about the adjustable ones is that you need a clutch stop. So I built this clutch stop, set it to the correct distance where you come off about a quarter of an inch, the clutch starts grabbing. Everything seemed fine, but again, went to the event the other day, as the car started getting warm, as I started putting in more and more laps, uh, the same thing started happening. It started grabbing higher and higher and higher. Um, and it was noticeable because it got to the point where you have to come off the clutch stop, you know, like an inch or so before the clutch would start grabbing. And I mean, you can feel it, you know, you barely have to press the clutch in to disengage the clutch. So my fear is that it's going to start slipping again. I mean, it is very borderline right now. It's, it's for sure a problem. And we're going to have to dig a little deeper to fix it. That's what we're doing today. Well, one of the things we're doing today. So long story short, we need to pull the transmission back out of the car and uh, figure out what is going on. So let's get this thing on the lift and dive in. to send these faces out and get these wheels, which are 15s, built into 17s and see how that looks like a 15 stepped up to a 17 on this car. The 17s look just too big, but I think if it's a 15 inch face stepped up, it might kind of counteract and just not look so goofy on the car. Because if I could run 17s, it drastically opens up my tire options. Make a new skid plate. Need to drain the trans, go back up top, clear the clutch fluid out uh, so we can unhook the clutch lines and not make a huge mess. Shifter while we're up there, a couple more things down here, trans should come out. Not too much. And it's a decent bit of work, but it's not that bad. That was a terrible removal method.
Well, it looks fine. It's not leaking any fluid. It's not like it's blown apart. See what measurements we can get on this and see what our measurement is up there. All right, if we go to the face here, which this isn't how you measure this, but just for to show you, we get 84, 85 mil. We measure here, which would be that same dimension. We get the exact same measurement using the same, you know, one inch square tube. Obviously you would subtract that to get your measurement and you also have to measure the pocket and whatever, but for comparison's sake, this distance from here to here should be the same as from the pressure plate fingers to here, and it is. So, leads me to believe we have an incorrect master cylinder. Maybe the rod's too long and there's kind of always tension on the master cylinder, it's not releasing all the way, or possibly just the stroke amount is wrong, something along those lines. So I've got to do some research, figure that out, figure out what one I might need, try to get it ordered and get it in and see if that solves our problem. What's weird to me is that it worked fine in the beginning. I had to adjust the pedal, you know, way out to get the clutch to grab in the middle and then as time went on it grabbed higher and higher. I don't know, man. Definitely an odd problem to have, but We'll figure it out. At least it's easy enough to pull the trans. It was only like an hour's work or so. All right, so I did some more measuring and basically right now this is a millimeter too long, not counting the three mil air gap we need. So in theory, it's adjusted four millimeters too far out. So I'm gonna try to adjust it in, triple double check everything, and then I've also got some other avenues I need to investigate as far as the problem. But I mean, that is a problem. It is a little, just a tiny bit too long. Fifty-three five plus fourteen five gives us sixty-eight. So we're pretty much right where we need to be. Put some blue lock type back on this bad boy. All right, I guess for now, since if this doesn't work, there's not really anything more we can do in here. It's a problem with the master cylinder. Put the trans back in, put it back together, bleed it, and see where we're at. Who knows? Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just measured wrong. When I measured originally, my flat bar was like forty mil thick, and I think just it being so much thicker than something thin like that three mil thick flat bar. Gave the greater room for variation in measurements. Sandy agrees, that's what she was telling me the whole time. Right, Sands? You agree? Now, I know you told me. You don't gotta rub it in my face. I know, I know, I get it. You were right, Sands. That's why you're the supervisor and I'm just the grunt worker. We've got everything in here we need to test the clutch actuation point uh, and basically make sure it's not still grabbing at the top. I've just got to bleed the clutch, uh, which I should be able to do myself. Testing the activation point gets tricky. One second, one second. 
Okay, it's tricky because you need a second person to spin the wheel, you know, with the car in gear while I press the clutch and then, you know, once the wheel starts spinning freely, we know that's kind of the breakaway point where the clutch is disengaged. Uh, however, Ben is not here at the moment and uh, I don't have any fluid in the trans, otherwise I could just start it up and do that to be able to make something work. <laughs> There's always a solution, so. Let's go try to bleed the clutch ourselves. We got a remote bleeder line, which will make it easy. And then uh, go from there. Oh, also check out this shirt. I found this in the depths of my drawer or my dresser. Company Miata Merch, they made this shirt and another one that's the opposite. So that's my buddy Marco's car. That's this car when it was red and turbo and beat up. And there's one flipped where my car is in front and his car is in back. Uh, but man, talk about a throwback. All right, anyway, I'm jibber jabbering. Let's drop this thing down, bleed the clutch. <laughs> So I have this four foot remote gear on. It makes this process very easy. Basically we fill the reservoir with fluid. Ah, drop the brake fluid. Put this in there, bleed it back to itself. Definitely got a pedal and we've got slop at the top. I wonder if I can do this one here. Well, so well, I mean. Okay, so we actually need to adjust the stop in a little bit now. Just a tiny bit. Well, that's a good sign. That means it should grab lower down now. All right, so I had to adjust the clutch stop down some, and now you can see our clutch pedal has some play here at the top, whereas before it's pushed all the way against the stop there and was still tight, still had pressure. So now we've got some slack there, which means we should be good. Obviously, it could get worse again, but I think we're in good shape. I had to adjust the stop down a decent bit and it's even like borderline. Might have to go down some more, but we won't know until we get the car running. But that's exciting. Means we might have resolved our problem this time and definitely that we needed to pull the trans out. It's always lame when you do something I and mean, you didn't need to do it, but I had, to, I had to pull it out. I had to find out. So anyway, <laughs> uh, just keep jamming out and putting this thing back together. Well, with the exhaust back in, since we've got to wait to get gear oil to do a final test on this thing, we need to rebuild my old skid plate. So I built this thing, obviously, to protect the underside, and it has done its job quite well. Uh, but at this point, it's taken a lot of hits, and as you can see, it is starting to come apart. This one's cracked pretty bad there. This one's been scraped like almost all the way through at this point. Uh, so what we're gonna do is cut the legs off, well, bigger, stronger, thicker legs, and uh, also I wanna clean this shape up some. Now that we have the finger sander, make it look a little nicer. This is one of my first aluminum uh, TIG projects, as you can probably tell. But like I said, this thing has absolutely done its job.
one thing I want to do is plate over these sections where it has scraped. I guess we could go across this whole thing. Just basically, you know, thicken it up where it's going to hit. Grind this edge down some. That'll do it. And these uh, welds are coming out pretty nice. I figured these kind of butt joint welds would be a little tricky, especially without having it standing up, but coming out nice and solid. The first set, I had some issues with the tungsten, but got better as we went on. So hopefully this section should come out really nice. This thing is still so toasty. All right, racing slash thickening process is complete. Now it's time to toss it back on the car, test fit it, figure out exactly how long we want the lights to be. bent to a way tighter radius than I thought. Last time I tried to bend aluminum, I guess it was a tiny bit thicker than this, but basically the bend radius was super wide. Uh, whereas this is a really tight radius, so this should work good.
side. Here it is with our little legs tacked on. It kind of had to be in odd positions, but that's why it's nice to tack things in the car because you know everything fits with them tacked there. So we're gonna weld these out. And we're gonna add some bracing, drill our holes, and we'll be done with this skid plate renovation. Our new and improved skid plate is on and installed. Super, super stout. This thing is freaking stouter than ever. Definitely glad we went with the thicker edition here. Just give us some more room to grind through because really the only thing that grinds is kind of this back section right here if I drop a tire off track. So we should be sorted. Uh, so glad to get that taken care of. The old one had seen a lot of abuse, a lot of ground hits. It needed some love. Before we move up top, I have a little project I wanna try, a little experiment if you will. See if we can change something. It's kind of another problem, recurring problem I've been having with this car, or a long-term problem, I don't know. A anyway, this is something I wanna try. Uh, we're gonna do some work, see if we can fix that problem. But first things first, while we're under here, we need to get the trans filled up with the gear oil. Cause once that's done, we can check our clutch stuff and see if we fixed it or not. <laughs> so I keep this four quart jug around that's from a while ago. And I just put whatever gear oil I get in there. And then I use a little pump to pump it up into the trans. All right, so the next problem on the to tackle, to do list, uh, it's just something that's been annoying me. It hasn't become a huge problem yet, but it's annoying me, you know? And I, I'd like to fix it if I can, and I have a theory. So problem is that the car is running a lot hotter than it used to with the 5.3. Ever since we swapped the 6.2 in, it runs hotter, but it runs hotter all the time. You know, I would expect it to run hotter in drift when you're beating on the car, you know, more power is gonna generate more heat, but it runs hotter all the time. If I start this thing up and let it idle, it gets up to 175 quick then it just sits there with the fans running the whole time it will not cool down past that after i do a run or so it won't cool down past 195 200 and then as more runs go on it gets hotter and again th those aren't crazy temps but i mean i've had to end my drift sessions early because i'm getting up to 225 230 and i don't really want to push it past that whereas this motor never got hot I could drive this thing till the front, a brand new set of tires popped and it would be at 210, 215. And if I let it sit and idle on a super hot day, it would idle down to 140 if I left the fans on. So that's what leads me to believe something else is the culprit. And the only other thing it could really be, the rest of the cooling system is the same, is the water pump. I had to put an LS2 water pump on to fit with the throttle body that I didn't end up using. So, I've heard that these flow less than an F-body pump. I'm not 100% sure. There's only one way to find out. Let's try it. We're gonna try it. I have my old F-body pump left over, which is the pump that was on the engine when it would always cool down super well and ran super cool all the time. Got it right here. I'm not 100% sure it's gonna fit with the LS3 intake and stuff, but might as well try it. So we're gonna toss this bad boy back on and see if we can't bring our temps down a little bit. Just water, people relax. All right, so the clearance to the tying cover is a little tight and it's the bolts that are the biggest hurdle. So I'm changing them over to Allen headed bolts which should give us that last little bit of clearance we need. The LS2 water pump's the same way. It gets real tight. Got everything changed over to the old, new old water pump. 
Toss it back on. I did test fit with the Allen bolts and it fits now. It fits actually better than the LS2 one did. All righty, new water pump is mostly on. Got to get this lower hose on. And then belt back on, throttle body intake, yada yada. Then we'll fill it up with some fluid and uh, let it run, see if this actually makes a difference or not. I, I, you know, I don't have huge hope. If it doesn't make a difference, still could be a million things. Could be a problem, could just be natural. I just find it odd, again, that at idle it warms up so much faster, um, which if the pump had much lower flow, that would make sense, so. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see. So I've got this tall funnel thing and what this is for is my radiator is lower than the highest point of the cooling system. So this allows us to fill this funnel up to above the highest point in the cooling system as if our radiator was that high. Uh, I had an expansion tank I built and put over here for it, but built up too much pressure and blew it up and I haven't built another one yet. The other nice thing about doing it this way is you can see the bubbles. Granted, there's a lot right now because we still have the whole system to fill, but you can see like the bubbles when it's just bleeding out that last little bit of coolant. You can really tell you're getting the cooling system bled properly. Whereas when you do it just from the cap, it's kind of hard to tell. Get some water water in. I just buy this by the big jug now because I know I'm going to end up using it eventually. So we'll bleed it out without the engine running, then we'll start the engine up, bleed it out with the engine running, cap it, see how everything goes. Cooling system is bled, new water pump is on. Uh, temps seem to be a little lower. It's really hard to tell without just like running the car outside in the heat. Uh, but anyway, we do need to see how the clutch is, where it grabs, if we need to adjust the stop down. If it's grabbing at the top like it was before, all of those things. So let's drop it down, find out. Hopefully what we did worked. Well, that definitely seemed to improve things. The clutch is grabbing a significant amount lower now. We'll really have to see at an event because, you know, sometimes when the car is cold and it's been sitting, it'll grab at a reasonable spot. And after several runs at an event, it'll start grabbing a little higher. Like I said before, with this setup, the adjustable throttle bearing, it, it's never slipped. It's just like, you know, it's been at that kind of borderline concerning point. So if it is, you know, a half inch, an inch further down than it was, it should be fine. Uh, but again, we'll have to see. And at least now that we've pulled it out, we've triple checked the measurements, we've shortened it up and, and yada yada and all that stuff, we at least know it's not internal to the trans. If there's still an issue, you know, it's something to do with the master cylinder. We can address that without pulling the trans back out. So we'll see how it is, see how it goes and uh, address it later if we have to, but at least the hard part of pulling the trans out and checking all that is done. So cool, well, really, to, to test all the changes, we gotta go to an event. So I'm sure we'll do that soon enough. But for now, that's really all we've got in store for the LS Miata at the moment. Uh, there's some stuff kind of lingering. Uh, there's a big project I wanna do, think about repainting it, yada, yada. But we've got other projects on the chopping block. So for now, Miata is done and dusted. We'll move on to something else. See you guys for that. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.